What's up guys, MC Stu here, and today we're going to take a look at the Winter Event ship. We are going to go over a completely free-to-play build on this, and uh, I gotta say, this thing did really, really well. Um, my initial thoughts on the ship itself, aesthetically, I'm not a huge fan of, of the way that it, uh, that it looks here. Um, it's not exactly what I think of when I think Star Trek, but it's a free ship, and it's a, uh, it's a pretty decent platform. Uh, for being free to us to get and a relatively easy event. So uh, the event, uh, you guys have most likely completed it, completed it by now. Um, so that ended, I think, a couple days ago. Um, so I'm sure everybody's working on builds for this. So I just wanted to get this out. This is going to be 100% uh, free to play. I do have a couple weapons on the ship that are lockbox weapons. Um, but it doesn't make any difference. I just didn't have any crafted ones. The crafted ones would perform exactly the same. So we'll just caveat that to start with. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the build. So what I decided to go with here is the or a cannon scatter volley build. And I also wanted to build a little bit around the trait on the ship, uh, which we'll get to when we get to the traits here. So let's just start off uh, taking a look at the gear. Um, so all of this, like I said, is free to play. It's gonna be rep, fleet gear, mission rewards, uh, everything that's in it or on it. All right, let's start with the weapons. So first one up front we hear, we have the uh, Terran Task Force uh, phaser uh, dual heavies. Uh, these are excellent. These are from the Terran reputation. Uh, next, these are the two weapons that I was talking about from the lockbox. They are sensor-linked weapons. Uh, again, if you were to use crafted um, dual heavy cannons, you would uh, perform just as well uh, with um, you know in place of these. I, I just didn't have any crafted ones, and I didn't want to craft them and upgrade them. So uh, you can swap these out for any other kind of dual heavy cannon that's a phaser, and you'll get the same kind of results out of it. Next, we have the prolonged engagement uh, cannon. This is from the Phoenix boxes. Um, once you unlock that on one character, it will account unlock it. I don't know if that was on purpose, um, but it's one of the items in the Phoenix boxes that um, account unlock. It's kind of weird. But uh, if you're unfamiliar with uh, how that works, if you go to the Dilithium store and you go to special items, you can buy Phoenix lock boxes here. They just cost Dilithium. I'd recommend buying them in packs of 10 because it's cheaper that way. Um, and then open those up and with a ultra rare you can go ahead and get yourself the prolonged engagement cannons next we have the phaser uh, quad cannons and these are going to come off of the uh, tactical escort refit it's a uh, tier 5 ship i believe let me pull it up here So it's a tier five ship. You can buy this from the ship vendor for Dilithium. If you're in a fleet uh, that has the discount, you'll actually get this cheaper. But if you are not, it would be 150,000 Dilithium to pick up the ship. You're not gonna use the ship. You're just gonna pull the quad cannons off of it that come on that ship. Uh, so that's where you obtain those. Next, we're using the Fleet Colony Deflector. This is for the crit chance, crit severity. Next is the prevailing innovative impulse engines. Uh, this is from the competitive reputation. And uh, these are here primarily whenever you use a firing mode, it's gonna give you a boost to your speed. And it's also going to give you a uh, tactical bridge officer ability um, cooldown um, reduction on, on their abilities or firing modes. Um, so that is very, very nice. Next, we're using the two piece. Uh, disco set and this is from the discovery rep and this is here for the survivability so the two piece on this and let's just go ahead and expand that two piece on this is going to give you quite a bit of uh, extra regen so 120 percent regen um, if you're finding that th this is a little bit glass cannon if you're not playing very aggressive with it if you're finding that you're dying um, you may want to swap out a couple of the tactical consoles for the fleet colony tactical consoles they'll give you passive heals and they stack and pair with this set very very well um, so you could switch out maybe one or two of those if you're having a little trouble with survivability Next in the back, uh, so there's three weapons. I have another uh, sensor linked. And again, you could just use a crafted. There's also quite a few uh, rep uh, weapons that are very good that you could use in the back. Uh, one of them that comes to mind is the um, uh, the Delta, the Gemidar rep. I don't know why it's escaping me. The, uh, the, the Delta, Jesus Christ, guys. The Gamma rep, um, there's a turret in here that's phaser um, that's very good. And it would actually be better than any of the crafted or the lockbox ones. So I'd recommend using that. 
Lastly, in the back for weapons, we're using the Dark Matter Torpedo. Um, this is here just for the two-piece set bonus with the uh, the Lorca console. Um, so when you have both of these um, slotted, the two-piece on that is going to give you a stacking critical severity. So every time you get a critical hit, you're going to get um, a critical severity boost. And uh, that lasts for 20 seconds. It stacks up to 25, so that's maximum of an extra 25 critical severity. And that 20 seconds refreshes every time. So as long as you're getting a crit hit every 20 seconds uh, or less, you're going to keep these stacks boosted up. And it's definitely worth having in the back, even though you're giving up a weapon slot that is not firing. Uh, next, I didn't upgrade this, um, but this is the experimental weapon that came with the ship. Um, I think it did all right. Uh, Casual SAB, I think, has done some reviews on this, said it's pretty good. Uh, like I said, I didn't upgrade it. Um, I, I'll, I'll get to that and probably do a review on it, um, but I left it on since that's what came on the ship. Looks kind of wild when it shoots. It looks like the, uh, the anti-proton torpedoes. It's kind of interesting, um, but in any case, uh, decent um, decent weapon, especially if you didn't have like the... Uh, the rising corvette from a few um years back on the uh, summer event that's what we've been using as best in slot on pretty much all the experimental weapons uh, but from what i understand this is a pretty uh, decent contender here uh, for our devices we are using the energy amplifiers to give us that boost to our energy weapon since that's the kind of build it is we're using the deuterium surplus for the extra speed boost and we are using the subspace field modulator. Um, this mission's still in the game. It's kind of hard to get to in order to get this drop, but it, it gives you a little bit of extra uh, damage resistance. If you don't have that, it's not it's not the end of the world. Um, just fill it with something else. If you have Kobayashi Maru, that would be a good one. I didn't use it on this because that's now in the mud store, and if you didn't play the event, then you wouldn't have it, and that wouldn't make this free to play. So. All right, so we already talked about the uh, Lorca console in conjunction with the Dark Matter Torpedo. Uh, this by itself, even without the two-piece, is very, very good. You're getting almost a 4% critical chance boost to this. Uh, we're getting a nice boost to our weapons power settings, and we're getting a huge boost to the Starship shield penetration. Um, so this all around is just an excellent console. Uh, the two-piece is excellent. And if you wanted to run this torpedo up front, maybe you know you don't have the prolonged jet or the, um, the quad cannon jet, you could run this up front and run something like the Trilithium Omni in the back from uh, Beyond the Nexus. Um, and pair that with this console here, which we'll get to in just a moment, because this torpedo by itself is a very good torpedo as well, and I would definitely recommend using that. Uh, but if you have you know, these other um, cannons, then th th that's the way you're going to want to go. Having all cannons up front is going to give you more performance. All right, so let's move on to engineering consoles. So we're using the, um, the House Martok defense configuration. This is here for the survivability. It gives us some flight turn rate, which this ship does not need at all. It is very, very fast, maneuvers very well, but it gives us some nice boost to our hull, uh, shields, and also engines, which again, I mean, <laughs> it's already a, a pretty squirrely ship. Um, this comes from the mission, I believe it is, uh, is it brush fire? No, it is not. I always forget this one. Um, this, yeah, it's brush fire. Okay, so that comes from brush fire. Luckily, I have some notes on my right here. So, <laughs> uh, so pick this up if you're doing a um, a disruptor build. There's an Omni that come that you can get with this as well, and that two piece gives you a real nice boost to uh, critical uh, chance. Um, so if you're doing a disruptor build, um, I would still use this console along with the Omni. All right, so next we have the reinforced armaments. This comes from Beyond the Nexus, as I stated. This is here also for the survivability. I don't really have any heals on this ship, um, so building up that survivability, and when we get to some of the uh, personal space traits, I went with a lot of um, resistance uh, rating uh, as well. If you had the, uh, was it the Trillium K, or what is it, Trillium D console, um, if you look that up online to find the mission, that gives some really nice boost to your um, survivability or resistance ratings and that would be a good contender as well um i, I would consider i would probably swap out the uh, the martok console if if i had that on this character which i don't um and i would also consider switching out this back one for the trilithium omni um which pairs with this here um with the reinforcement armor, ar armaments um when you pair those two together, the two piece gives you a, a fire cycling haste, and that's pretty beneficial for a cannon scatter volley build like this. Uh, so there's some other kind of options that you could look into using depending on what you have or what you want to you know grind for and pick up. 
Next, we're using the zero point energy conduit. This comes from the Romulan rep, and this is here for the extra power that we're getting to all power uh, subsystems. Uh, we get some drain out of it, which really doesn't matter for this build, and we're also getting a nice boost to our critical chance. We're at 2.24 critical severity. Next, we are using the quantum phase converter, and this is here for the extra phaser damage that it's giving us. We're getting some auxiliary power, which again, with the way that this is configured, isn't a real big deal. And again, the drain is basically useless. Uh, this comes from the mission Sunrise. You can also get a uh, dual heavy cannon off of this mission as well as uh, along with a beam. So if you don't have you know a bunch of this stuff, you're brand new, you can run that mission twice, get yourself a dual heavy cannon and pick yourself up the, uh, the console. So that's a nice replacement if you don't have a crafted one or you know, you're just starting and needing to build that up. All right, next we have in the engineering slots here, the assimilated module. This is here for the extra critical chance and critical severity, as well as the weapons power settings. We're getting a boost to it. And we're also getting some control expertise. We are running a gravity well, so that doesn't hurt on this particular build either. This comes from the Omega rep, and uh, it's definitely a go-to, especially if you're a free to play. This is real easy to get. I think you get it after tier one's complete on it. So you can get it relatively quickly, and uh, it's a great console that you can use on, on quite a few different builds. Next, we're using the M6 computer. Um, that comes off of the, let's pull it up, the Temporal Escort. Um, this is another one, a uh, ship that you can buy from the ship vendor, the Temporal Escort. It's a tier three, 75,000 to lithium. And again, you can get a discount if you're in a fleet that has the discount active uh, through the uh, fleet to lithium mine. Um, and you can pull this console off. This console is excellent. So you're going to get a 15% bonus all damage for 15 seconds, which is really good. That's cat two bonus. You get 25% cooldown reduction on your tactical bridge officer abilities. And it's going to give you a huge 20% fire cycling haste for all your weapons, uh, as well as some accuracy and some defense. Uh, so this is a really, really good um, console to have. It's a, um, you know, poor man's version of like the domino console that you would get from getting an epic uh, voucher from the um, uh, from the Phoenix store, uh, which is extremely hard to come by these days in order to get one of those ships. Uh, so this is a, a really good option to uh, to get your hands on something that's going to be pretty, uh, pretty darn close. Um, so I'd recommend picking that up as well. It's useful on, on quite a quite a few builds. Next, we have the Ordnance Accelerator console. This is a universal console from the Gamma Rep. And uh, this is here for the phaser um, boost that we're getting. So 23.8% when you have it upgraded to Mark 15. Uh, it's not epic or anything yet, so that could get a little bit higher. You could also use this on a Polaron build, um, projectile build, mine you know, re recharge. So kinetic, Polaron, or phaser. This is a pretty decent console to have. And then lastly, in our tactical slots, we're running three of the exploiters, um, our locators, I'm sorry, and one exploiter. If I had more of the exploiters, I'd probably go like one and then three um, just for the, the way that I have this set up. Um, but use what you have. Um, I, I think, you know, critical chance is a little easier to come by these days, especially with the Endeavor system and a lot of these other consoles. Um, so just organize these or slot, you know, what you need where you need to fill in those gaps. Um, so if you're a little bit low on crit, go, you know, more with, with the exploiter. If you're a little bit, you know, low on chance, then go with the locators. Um, so just kind of put that together, you know, in the way that makes the best sense for you. Let's move on to the skill tree. So this is the same skill tree I basically use on everything. And I'll just kind of scroll down here. Um, this is more of a tactical oriented one for energy weapons and basically anything except for science because um, I don't have any EPG here. I do have a, a video link down in the description um, that goes over a couple different skill trees depending on what you're doing, as well as a catch-all that I use on my main account. This is my free-to-play account um, that um, I have set up where I can basically run any kind of build without messing with the skill tree, which is helpful because it's kind of a nightmare to respec. Um, I'm running strategist as the secondary and intel as the primary for the specializations. Let's move on to the traits. So we didn't have a lot of choices with traits because we just went with everything that we had that was stock. Since it's cannons, we're using the cannon training for the extra boost. Uh, we're using the fleet coordinator. This gives you 2% bonus cat two damage for yourself and every teammate. So a maximum of 10% uh, that you can get out of that. 
Uh, next, we're using innocuous, and this is for the extra critical severity and the reduction in threat generation, which is really important on a ship like this, where it doesn't have a lot of survivability. Anything you can do to reduce threat is going to help. We are using operative for the extra critical chance, critical severity. And then most of the rest of this stuff is kind of all I had left, so I just threw it in. So we took the accuracy. Um, we took the efficiency. Um, and then these two here, um, these are kind of generic um, each one gives you three different kinds of weapons damage resistance. So I went with both to cover all of them. Um, so, you know, depending on what TFO or mission you're playing, you'll you'll have some sort of, you know, extra survivability against that particular foe. You know, so like Borg, for instance, use plasma and, um, you know, Klingons use disruptors. So ha having this extra uh, resistance is really, really helpful. Uh, so resistance in this game is pretty important. There There is a point, you know, and I always get the comment where there's diminishing returns, and that's true. You don't want to build around, um, you know, massive amounts of resistance because once you start getting up to a maximum rating of like 50, um, you're putting too much effort into it and you're having to give up too much to get it and you start getting, you know, less for your money, quote unquote, when you start putting it into it. But having a good, you know, 30, 40, uh, you know, resistance rating on the different uh, energy types and damage types um, will, will definitely make a big, big difference, especially if you don't have, you know, survivability traits and things like that. Next, we are using uh, Techie. So this is here for the extra regen. Uh, Thrill Seeker for the flight and full impulse speed, which again on this ship, I mean, I should probably take it off. It'd make it easier to fly because it's already very, very fast. And then lastly, we are using Warp Theorist. And this is here to give us um, uh, warp core potential and plus 10 starship. Um, what is that? Uh, electroplasmic system flow. Um, so that's when you come out of, you know, say full impulse and your power rating is going down. When you come out of that, things are going to power back up quicker. Um, so if you're, you know, moving your energy settings around or whatever, which you really shouldn't be doing. Um, so again, I mean, I could take this off. I could take this off. I could probably even take this off and it wouldn't make any kind of difference, but got a little bit of OCD and I needed to fill in the slots. And these were free ones that just come with your character. All right, next let's talk starship traits. So for starship traits, uh, the first one that I am using here is withering barrage. And you might say, well, wait a minute, this comes off a sea store ship, and that is true. Um, it also comes off some of the legendary ships. It comes off of Romulan versions and Klingon versions of it. But it also comes off of a ship that you can get if you have a Klingon recruit. And if you don't have a Klingon recruit, last year they ran the event at the end of January. So I'm expecting to see that probably around the same time, end of this month, beginning of next month. So if you don't have that trait, um, you will be able to roll a Klingon recruit. And this is one of the rewards that you can get for completing um, the different objectives that the recruit has. Um, there's some specific videos on the recruits. And if you're not familiar with those, just put a search into my channel or into YouTube in general uh, for you know KDF recruit, STO, and you'll get all the information you need about what that is. So if you're brand new, or you just started a couple months ago, um, you will have an opportunity to be able to get this ship and this trait. Um, the reason this trade is important is because what it does is it extends your cannon scatter volley by uh, four seconds. So it runs for 10 seconds stock. And depending on, you know, the cooldowns you're using and things like that, even best case scenario, you can only cool down an ability to 50%. So in this stock cooldown is 30 uh, seconds. And so if you have the maximum amount of cooldowns, you're basically being able to keep this up 100% of the time, less one second in between. So to run for 14, your cooldown is up at 15 and you can reactivate it again. With this particular build, I'm getting pretty close to that. So I'm, I'm, I'm being able to keep up cannon scatter volley by um, a significant margin, almost, I'd say probably about 95% of the time in consistent combat. Um, so with any of these builds that, that you do, and I won't go too far off onto a tangent, but if you say, I want to do, you know, beam overload, then there's a trait that extend, extends beam overload. You know, whatever it is you're picking is your primary, you know, attack function. You want to look at picking up the trait that's going to extend that ability so you can get the most out of it. Otherwise, if you don't have, you know, very good cooldowns and you don't have an extension, you might find that your main firing mode's running for that 10 seconds stock, and then it's on cooldown for another 10 seconds. So it's only up 50% of the time. And just by filling that gap, you're going to just dramatically increase the amount of damage output that you can do. 
All right, next we are using a trait that comes from completing your um, specialization. So this is from Strategist. And what this is doing when this is slotted is it turns this ability right here, which is normally just a, um, a boost to uh, your, your resistances. It adds a 20% uh, bonus all damage for 15 seconds, which is really, really nice. Um, so this has, I believe it's a minute cooldown. So every minute or so you can, uh, you can hit this and it gives you a very large damage boost. Um, so this is a, a captain ability and in all of the classes are going to have this available to you. Uh, so this is a great free trait that you can get just by completing that. And we'll just take a quick look. So if you go to your specialization, go to strategist, if you fill all of these out, then it unlocks that trait and you'll have that available to you. The next trait, we did the same thing. It's from the Intel. Um, and again, it's one of those ones, if I, you know, if I didn't have it slotted, we probably wouldn't notice a big difference, but activating any uh, weapon enhancements ability, so beam overload, um, scatter volley in this case, um, torpedo spread, whatever, it is going to remove one debuff effect and it's gonna grant plus five accuracy for 30 seconds and that can stack up to four times. Uh, accuracy is not a huge deal when you're playing, you know, the PVE side. It is a big, big deal if you're playing PVP. Um, so again, if I were to take this off, um, you know, having that debuff cleanse is nice. Um, but again, I don't know that I would notice a real big difference. Um, but it's a free, it's a free trait. And if you've unlocked uh, that um, that specialization, then you know I would use it if you don't have anything else. Lastly, we are using the trait that came on the ship. So this is an interesting one, uh, bridge officers. Um, bridge officer an anomalies. So any ability that your bridge officer um, uses that creates an anomaly is going to spawn lost souls that last for 30 seconds and deal physical damage, ignore shields to random nearby foes um, up to twice per second with a maximum of 12 lost souls. Um, so we'll get into the abilities that I've slotted here in just a moment in order to um, uh, to, to proc this ability, they're right here on the, the top, um, and I'll show a list of these actually of what an anom anomaly is. And if you type into Google STO anomalies, you'll find this page, and this is going to give you a list of all the anomalies. So this ship has seating for um, temporal and for the... Um, Intel spec, so I was able to use one from each of those as well as some of the science stuff um, in order to uh, try and get a few of those up. If you were to use Ceaseless Momentum in conjunction with this, that would probably boost it even more because Ceaseless Momentum boosts that sort of a damage. Um, other things that you could slot here, if you have purchased some ships, I'll just you know give you some, some, some extras. Um, if you do have some ships or you know whatever it may be, um, using something like, uh, let's look at the traits here. Uh, emer um, emergency weapon cycle. So this generally is if someone's like, you know, I'm going to buy my first ship, you know, then I ask them two questions. You know, do you just want to fly around in your favorite ship or are you building, you know, for damage output or, you know, because that, that's a question to ask. If, if somebody just wants to, you know, fly the dream, then, you know, pick what makes you happy. And that's totally cool. Um, if you're, you know, decided, hey, I want to purchase a ship because I want to up, you know, the, the damage output that I'm doing, this is probably the first trade I'd recommend to anybody. Comes off the Arbiter. It's a decent ship. It's an older ship, um, but it's very, very good. It reduces your weapons power cost and it also boosts your fire cycle uh, haste, which is really, really, really really, really, really good. Um, so I would definitely use that if you have it on this ship. You could even use like history would remember or will remember as well. Um, something like that to maybe help you stay alive uh, or maybe like strike from shadows would be another one. Those are all three of them are sea store ships. Here's another one. So this gives you a, a damage boost, all damage, but it also reduces your threat generation by 60%, which is really nice. It also gives you the critical chance boost. So this is a really nice trait to have as well. So those are three other options that you could either swap some of these out for or fill in the gaps if you already have them or if you're in the market to purchase a ship. All right. Uh, next, I actually didn't even go through these when I put this build together, but I think we're OK. This is what I would have used. So we have the precision. These are unlocked as you unlock different levels of um, uh, of your rep. Um, so you can see them here. The first tier is ground. Second tier, you know, you got space stuff and on and on and on. So as you go through and unlock these different tiers, you're going to unlock these these rep traits. Um, so what we're using is precision this is here for the boost to critical chance plus five percent next is going to be advanced targeting systems this is giving us plus 16 percent to our critical severity 
Tyler's Duality, uh, this is a really good one to have. This scales off your hull, so the more hit points you have, the more critical chance it's gonna boost. It maxes out at plus 7.5% critical chance at a 200 uh, hit point capacity. Uh, and then lastly, we are using Magnified Firepower, and this is giving us a plus 6.3% bonus uh, weapons damage. Um, so this is a Cat 2 boost, and this is really, really nice to have as well. Uh, for the active space reputation, so these are clickies that unlock again with the space traits. Uh, we're using the um, interference decoy. So this basically will help you drop threat. So if you start, you know, getting focused, you can drop this and that will help uh, break some of that focus on you. So they'll be firing at that. Um, next, we have the anti-time entanglement singularity. Um, this is a nice one to pair with the uh, quantum... What is that comp? Jesus, I can't even. I can't even talk. <laughs> the quantum singularity uh, multiplication is that what that says? QSM. Anyways, guys, don't judge me. Uh, if you click this first, um, it'll end up giving you a, a nice boost um, to your all your science stats for eight seconds. So if you click this first, it also puts you into a cloak so you can use it to drop that threat if you're getting focused. But you can also use it to pair with this because uh, it'll boost the effects on this and it has a nice radius of effect. So if you're not you know hurting at all and you have a good amount of you know bad guys all grouped up or in one spot, click the QSM first and then click your anti-time entanglement and that'll do a decent amount of damage. Lastly, I have the refracting Tetrion Cascade. Doesn't do tons of damage, but it's a nice little, you know, free damage clicky that you uh, you can have there. Um, other options you could do here is the biomolecular shield generator. You know, unfortunately shields just don't, they're, they're, they don't do a lot in this game. And I know that sucks because in the show, when the shields were down, it was over, right? I mean, that was a bad time. In this game, that's not the case. Uh, and it, I don't care what you say, <laughs> that's the bottom line. I know we don't want it to be that way because that's not the reality in terms of, you know, the show and the movies. But in this game, your hull, your resistance, those kinds of things, they're king. Um, but it does make me feel good sometimes to click this and, you know, it, it gives you a little bit of something. So you could go that route if you're someone that's, you know, building around shields, however you would do that. Um, but otherwise, I think this is a pretty pretty good lineup. If you had the fifth slot um, unlocked, then I most likely would be running running this here. All right, so that takes care of our traits. Let's talk about our um, bridge officer seating. Um, so we'll start with engineering here. This is a uh, uh, this is actually a universal slot. I used it for engineering because I needed to be able to have uh, emergency power to weapons uh, for the big boost that it gives to your weapons. Um, I went ahead and spec'd him in the um, temporal spec to use the chronometric inversion field because um, this is going to proc those lost souls to come out anytime you use it. And then I put in let it go. This comes from the winter event store. So all those ornaments that you were just saving up, this is something that you can buy. This is a nice uh, you know, filler uh, to put in. It does some cold damage, which is kind of whatever. But if you use it on larger targets, it does uh, negative five all damage resistance rating every second for 20 seconds. Uh, so that's a tremendous amount of, uh, of debuff that you can put on a target. It's going to have to be a larger tar target for that to stack up all the way for the 20 seconds, um, but it's still a, a nice little clicky to have there. Uh, moving on to tactical, so I have uh, torpedo spread and beam overload here. Um, I went with these two because they proc the engine, so they, they keep me moving a little bit faster. And again, the ship is already fast, but I, I do like to fly quick. I, I want to have that maneuverability and get from A to B as quickly as possible. Um, so I slotted these two, even though they're not actually firing a weapon, and they're in my spam bar just to keep me going. Um, you could use, um, you know, if you move the torpedo up front, and then spread makes sense. You could leave that there. Um, you could use a tactical team if you wanted to. Um, but for me and the way I like to play, um, I, I like this configuration, so I went that way. But you have some choices here, or if you have a few lockbox traits like chemosite or um, the um, uh, distributed targeting or something like that, then there's certainly some better ones that you can use here, but they did not fall into the free category, so I did not include them. Next, we're using attack pattern beta, and this is here for the debuff that you get. Um, you could also use... Um, Attack Pattern Omega as well. That's going to give you a speed boost and a damage direct boost. Uh, personally, I like the um, the debuff on it, especially on Cannon Scatter Volley, because you're hitting at least a few targets and debuffing them. So I tend to normally lean uh, towards beta. It's personal preference, but you could use something else. 
Uh, lastly, we have the main firing mode, which is the cannon scatter volley three. Um, I would definitely, because it's available, always use the maximum you know rank that you can on the particular ship for what you're building around. If this ship didn't have a tactical lieutenant commander and I still wanted to do uh, cannon scatter volley, which you can do on a ship like that, then it would go in the lieutenant commander slot. Pretty straightforward. Uh, next, we have our tactical lieutenant intel slots and this I used intel abilities so I started with intel team and this is here to help keep me alive so it's giving me some defense it's also you know kind of like cloaking the ship as well dropping your threat generation by a nice chunk um, I actually was running two to have them kind of stagger a bit um, it keeps it up a little bit longer uh, but I think it made more sense to use the ionic turbulence and this is here in order to proc the trait that comes on the ship so when you use this the lost souls come out all right, engineering. Uh, I have a just a in the blah, blah, blah. all right. Next in our next engineering slot or the designated engineering slot, uh, we have lieutenant here and we have emergency powered engines. This is being paired with a duty officer that I have uh, whenever I use that ability or when I use the evasive maneuvers. And once evasive maneuvers comes off of cooldown, if I click emergency power to engines, that is going to refresh this and see it dropped down to five seconds. And now I can use that again quickly. Uh, so that's why I have that there. Lastly, in the science slots here, I'm using very cold in space. Um, I use that because it also procs the, um, the trait from the ship. So that'll bring the lost souls out and it does a nice little bit of damage over time, which is kind of cool. Uh, this comes from the winter, uh, event store as well. So again, ornaments, you can go ahead and pick this up from the winter event store. Uh, if you watch my video on how to get those, you should have more than you know what to do with. Um, and these are not real expensive. So that makes it really nice. Uh, next, I'm using Photonic Officer. This is for cooling down um, all my Bridge Officer abilities. So this is reducing um, the cooldown by 2% every second for 20 seconds. Now it does have, I believe it's a 30 second cooldown. Is that right? Yeah, 30 second cooldown. So there is some fall off where, you know, it's cooling down abilities and you'll see this number kind of moving a little bit faster every so often. But after that, initial 20 seconds, it's not doing anything anymore. There's nothing you can do to speed up the cooldown of this. So there are much better ways to cool down your abilities, either using Ox to Bat. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with that, just type it into YouTube or into my channel search. Um, Boinlers is another one. Um, there's quite a few different ways to, to get cool downs. Um, this is the cheapest way. If you feel like you're just not getting it you know, as much as you want, you could you know, skip gap gravity well and go with the Photonic Officer 2 instead of 1, and that's gonna give you 3% every second for 20 seconds. Um, if you went that route, I don't know what I would probably use here. I'd probably use like, um, I don't know, um, probably one of the science heels um, is what I would use there just to give me a little bit extra on the ship. But I didn't find that I had any problems using Photonic Officer 1, uh, so that worked out fine for me. Lastly, I used Gravity Well, and again, that was mainly here, uh, or it is mainly here, to um, proc the trait that came on the ship. So again, using this is gonna call in those lost souls to do the physical damage to nearby enemies. And you know, grouping up the enemies is, is not a bad thing. You do have to be kind of careful um, because doing things that have a large area of effect is going to you know pull threat. So using things like you know Intel team or if you have uh, you know strike from shadows or you know something like that in order to reduce that further, um, that, that really makes a big difference, especially on these kinds of builds where they're they're you know they're 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 glass cannons, but they're designed to you know be able to kill everything quick enough before you know they're able to do enough damage to you on the free level. You have to be a little more careful in making sure that you're targeting you know, targets that are gonna do the most damage to you first and kind of working your way down. So if you manage your target selections first, you can still get by, you know, on a build like this that really, you know, its survivability mostly depends on its damage output. Um, although we do have some stuff built in, even though they're not clickies, they're, you know, resistance ratings and different things like that. All right, uh, let's see here next. Let's talk duty officers. So again, there wasn't anything like major here other than the um, the con officer. This is the one that I alluded to. 
um, that pairs with emergency power to engines and in turn will cool down evasive maneuvers. This comes from also the Phoenix boxes um, and I definitely recommend picking this up. Um, I, I grab it on all my tunes as soon as I possibly can. Uh, lastly, if I had more of these, I probably would have used three. So this is damage control. So a chance to reduce recharge time for emergency power to subsystems abilities. Um, so basically if you're using, you know, emergency power to engines, and I'm also using one of the main, you know, next to the firing mode, the next important ability on this ship is emergency power to weapons. Um, and so emergency power to weapons gives you big, you know, damage boost and is a really, really good ability. And then when I use another ability that has, you know, that, that same, you know, emergency power to engines, um, these duty officers will give you a chance to reduce the cooldown on all the other ones. Um, so you can pair that with like emergency power to structural integrity is another one. Cause these do cool each other down and puts them on a global. So you'll see it's a 15 seconds. Um, but this is, you know, this ability is running, this will be off. And then when this comes up again, you know, you have the chance to be cooling those down. So having these duty officers, they're cheap. They're pretty easy to come by. Um, I only had the two. If I had another one, I would uh, use it. And if I had higher ranks of them, it gives you a higher percentage chance. Um, then I would use that as well. All right. So that is the build. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it in combat. And then we'll just do a quick kind of overview uh, at the end of its overall performance. And uh, we'll say goodbye for now after that. All right, guys, let's uh, let's see how this ship does. All right, and I'm going to uh, go ahead and just kind of talk through this while uh, while we're doing it, or do my best. Um, these are generally pretty fast paced, so I'm going to start buffing up here. And I'll try and do some call outs if possible. But at the beginning of this, it's nice to uh, get that gravity ball. Well, like long way, Jesus. That's a fail. <laughs> Make sure your ship stays pointing the right way. So with with cannon scatter volley, it's it's really really important to you know be piloting your ship in a way that keeps it forward facing. So I need to take down these other enemies first, but first I'm going to drop on those those anomalies onto the main, then target the tac cube, and then target the other spheres. Um, otherwise, you might find yourself in a, in a place where you're getting beat up a little a little bit too hard there. Some maneuvers came in late, and that was fun. Looks like somebody came over here and had a little trouble, unfortunately. It's always good to go left, right. That's generally what your, your team is going to do. And uh, staying with your team on this is uh, definitely preferable. We got a few bulked up here, so we're going to use uh, these two paired together. You see that um, those red torpedo-like looking things? That's that experimental weapon. It, it looks like the anti-proton uh, torpedo weapon. Let's take care of this one here. All right, let's get over to the middle. So this is generally where I'm going to uh, to drop this, um, this interference decoy. Otherwise, uh, I'll probably end up having some problems. The clicky that you get from strategist here as well, it's pretty nice. So it gives you a damage boost and it also drops some of your threat. So when you're right in the middle here, that, uh, that's really nice. Not bad, not bad at all. Let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look and see how we did. All right, uh, so that was a pretty good run. Um, again, I'm th this ship does really well. I had some kind of poor piloting at the beginning. Um, but for free to play at 136, I did a run before I recorded the actual build video itself. Um, and on that run, we did even better. There was uh, another person in there that did um, a, a good amount more than I did. Um, so it moved the, the match along a little bit faster. Uh, but that run, uh, we were at 155K um, with this same build. Um, so it's this ship is is definitely capable. Um, I think if you have, you know, some other traits that like, um, I don't know, spore infused anomalies, some things to pair with 
the trait that comes on the ship, you could probably make this shine even more and in a more unique way, which is always fun. This is pretty much your standardized kind of cannon scatter volley build, although we did build around this trait a little bit. And let's just take a look and see how uh, how we did with uh, with the trait itself. On the last run, it wasn't super impressive, um, but we're not boosting that that kind of damage output either. We're, we're boosting phaser, you know, output. We're not boosting the physical damage. So um, let's find it here. It should be under pets. Lost souls. It's not bad at 12K and we're not doing anything to boost that that kind of damage that they do. Um, so that's that's pretty, pretty darn good. Um, so you really can't complain, especially on a you know full free free to play build like this. Um, Cause let's just look at this. So yeah, so these are doing physical. So again, if you had ceaseless momentum um, or you're using any other kind of boost to, to physical damage, you would get a lot more out of these. And if you were using a trait like, uh, like I said before, the um, uh, spore infused anomalies, this trait's gonna go off a lot more often and keep it stacked up. So I think you could probably do a decent amount of damage with this. It didn't do a ton on this, but you know, an extra, what was that, 12K? Um, that's that's nice. That, that, that's a nice extra little chunk there. And uh, I, I think it's worth uh, worth using. Our start was a little rough because I was kind of pointing sideways there, but you know, that's just how it goes. Uh, but all in all, guys, um, this ship looks um, a little weird, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a good little ship. The seating on it, the capability it has, um, it's really it's a really, really good ship, especially at zero dollars. So, um, also I should just mention the shield that I have on this right now is the medical vanity shield. Um, and I just, it looks kind of racy and with the fire and stuff, that's kind of cool. Um, I do want to also, I was trying to get screenshots of this thing moving and stuff. I mean, look at this thing. When I, when I put this thing into full speed, the fire that sprays out of the top and stuff, it's almost hard to look at. Let's go max speed. <laughs> Look at that. It's outrageous. From the top, it's not too bad. You look at it from any other way, that bloom, it's just, it's it's insane. It's kind of cool. You know, it's different. I appreciate that. Um, but again, it's, um, you know, it, it's not what I think of when I think Star Trek. But again, it's free. I'll take it. So, um this definitely has two thumbs up for me, guys. Uh, let me know. You know, most of us have probably had this ship in our hands for a good week or so. Let me know what you guys are doing with it. Um, let me know if this build video was helpful. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comments. There's a link to the Discord server as well down in the comments. I will be launching a uh, giveaway in the Discord server for a tier six um, coupon. Um, that you'll be able to use in the uh, C store. Um, that'll be for PC. And that'll go live uh, on probably when this video goes live, which is going to be Monday the 9th. Um, so I'm recording it on Sunday the 8th right now. Um, but yep, check out the, uh, the description for those links. And uh, I think that takes care of it, guys. Until next time, I appreciate y'all for watching. Have a good one. Hey guys, appreciate you watching. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button, ring the bell, and sub to the channel for the latest news updates and how-to guides.